Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In this video, I want to tell you about the biggest prison in the world that has recently opened in El Salvador. If you follow the channel, you'll know that prior to Christmas, I posted a video talking about the crisis that's going on right now in the economy in El Salvador. And originally when I made this video, I was intending to give you a full update on what's happening with regards to Bitcoin and the cash situation and the bailout that China was talking to El Salvador about back in November. However, as I was doing all of the research on all of those items, I started looking into the mega prison that was opened in El Salvador recently, which is designed to hold 40,000 gang members in a single area. And this is the single largest prison in the whole of the world. This is the single largest prison in the whole of the world and it's state of the art. It's been constructed in the middle of nowhere and it's been designed to make sure that none of these gang members can escape, that none of them have any access, any communication with their former gangs and that there will be no prison breaks, no corruption, no bribery and everybody will see out their sentences. And the reason that this has been constructed is that the president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele, has been waging a one-man war on gangs for the last five or six years. And since he took over as president, he's made breaking up the gang culture his number one objective. And as I looked more into this story and looked into the details of this mega prison, I decided that I was going to make a whole video just on the prison itself. So this is very different to the usual postings that I put up. We don't have any graphs talking about economics. I'm not mentioning inflation. We're not going to go into the ins and outs of the population pyramid in El Salvador. This video is about the prison itself because I think it's a really interesting idea. It's very difficult to be able to break up gang culture once it's established. So somebody needs to take a very firm hand to do that. And of course, once you start arresting tens of thousands of people, the problem that you have is where do you put them? And then what happens to them once they're in the prison system? And in a lot of countries, the prison systems are actually run by gangs. And so the problem just gets worse and worse. So just because you've arrested lots of gang members doesn't mean you've solved the problem. It just means that you've moved it from one part of society to another. So this mega prison in El Salvador is really trying to come up with a solution to try to put El Salvador back onto an even keel and get the economy going in the right direction. And that's really why I wanted to post this video and also to share with you some of the amazing footage. So hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of the video. As I said, it's very different to the usual sort of videos that I post, but please let me have your feedback. Please let me know what you think, whether or not you'd like me to post more videos like this that are slightly different to my usual format or whether you want me to go back to the hardcore graphs and explanations of the economic data. El Salvador is located in Central America, which sits between North America and South America, obviously, and has land borders with Honduras to the north and the east, Guatemala to the northwest, and has an extensive amount of Pacific Ocean coastline to the south. And interestingly, it's the only Central American country that doesn't have any Caribbean coast whatsoever. El Salvador is the smallest and most densely populated of the seven Central American countries. El Salvador is known as the land of volcanoes because it has more than a hundred and around 20 of these are still potentially active. 
And Santa Ana, which stands 2,381 meters above sea level, is the highest volcano in the country. Due to the fact that it has so many volcanoes, the country has very little level land and less than 20% of the soils are suitable for agriculture. Despite this, in the past, the country was a large producer of coffee beans and at one stage was the fourth largest exporter in the world. However, these exports have now fallen significantly. From the late 1970s to the early 1990s, the economy and the country of El Salvador was decimated by civil war. During this period, the country experienced military-dominated rule, profound social inequality and repression. In 1992, a United Nations-mediated peace settlement was agreed and democracy was introduced into the country. However, the economy was rocked further by Hurricane Mitch in 1998, which caused extensive damage and a major earthquake in 2001. El Salvador's economy today is dominated by manufacturing. The majority of raw materials are imported. The country then manufactures and produced finished articles, a lot of it for the textiles industry, and then it's exported overseas. The biggest export market for El Salvador is the USA after a free trade agreement was signed in 2004. However, these accomplishments have been offset by high oil prices, natural disasters, and a decline in the number of manufacturing plants. These factors have prevented El Salvador from paying off its external debt and the country continues to rely partly on foreign aid. It's estimated that more than 1 million Salvadorians live in the United States and have played an increasingly important role in the Salvadorian economy since the end of the country's civil war, as they send back large amounts of cash every single month. El Salvador has long been known as one of the most violent countries in the world. America deported thousands of criminal gang members back here in the 90s and the poverty-stricken barrios of the capital have been plagued by turf wars ever since. Enter President Nayib Bukele, El Salvador himself. Or at least, that's how many here see him as the savior. The economic areas will attract investors. The self-styled tech bro appears as a very modern president. He leads through his social media channels and has made El Salvador the first country in the world to accept Bitcoin as legal tender. The crackdown in response to one of the deadliest weekends in El Salvador. Authorities reporting 67 homicides in a single day, prompting a state of emergency that gave way to mass arrest and tougher punishment to gang members already behind bars. The president touting the efforts on social media under the hashtag war on gangs. Bukele even asking parents to show the videos to their teenage children and warn them saying gangs can only lead to prison or death. And there are now a lot of people in prison. More than 20,000 have been arrested in a highly publicized campaign. Bukele's government has dramatically increased sentences for gang activity, up to 45 years for adults and a possible 10 years for children as young as 12. The United States has condemned scenes like these, but the government is in no mood to be lectured by the Americans. But Bukele responding to criticism, accusing them of defending the gangs. Y no me importa lo que digan los organismos internacionales, que vengan a proteger a nuestra gente. Que vengan a llevarse a sus pandilleros, si tanto los quieren. Now the footage in this video is actually taken from Naib Bukele's posting where he's actually undertaken a formal tour of the facility before it was opened. So here we can see the president of El Salvador arriving at the facility. Here he's going through the main entrance into the collection area where all prisoners will be processed. And he's being taken round by the governor of the new prison, who's explaining to him all of the facilities and why this prison is so state of the art and why it's going to be very different from all of the established prisons in El Salvador. So as you can see, he's saying here that in previous prisons, the gangs were basically running the whole place and they were able to bring in anything that they wanted, sound systems, computers, cell phones, even prostitutes. Now, in terms of where this prison is located, rather than the old system whereby prisons are generally located in residential areas, in fact, some old schools have been converted into prisons, what El Salvador have done here is they've purchased a huge piece of land and they have built this state-of-the-art facility 
in the middle of nowhere. And the reason that they've done that is to make it very difficult for any of the gangs to have any contact with anybody that's inside the prison. So in terms of a prison break, turning up to try to break somebody out and release one of the prisoners, Firstly, it's remote, so it's going to be difficult to get to this prison to do that. Secondly, it's going to be more difficult to plan it. Thirdly, they'll be able to see people who are approaching the prison because there's absolutely nothing surrounding it. And fourthly, it's going to be very difficult for them to actually break in because of the facilities that they built in terms of the security fencing, all of the really thick reinforced concrete walls and everything else. So it's been designed to make it very difficult for the gangs to have any contact with the people inside. Now, in terms of the cells themselves, the way this prison has been constructed is for mass holding of prisoners. So the cells have been designed to hold lots and lots of prisoners in quadruple tier bunks. And these bunks are located very close together. So there are around about 100 bunks in every single one of these cells. So there is going to be an enormous amount of prisoners. And unfortunately for these prisoners, there are only two wash facilities. So these concrete squares at the front are basically the baths that have been set up. And all the water will be controlled centrally by the guards. So the prisoners won't be able to turn on the taps and flood the area and use water to their advantage. And there are only going to be two toilets in every single cell. So you've got around about 100 prisoners, two toilets and two washing areas. So the facilities are fairly basic and it's going to be fairly grim. And the idea is to keep the prisoners in this cell for the vast majority of their time. And the cells have been designed to make sure that it's easy for the guards to defend and it will be very difficult for the prisoners to actually do anything apart from just remain in the cells the whole time. Now in terms of energy efficiency, the whole area has been set up to be very light. So they've got two large windows at either end and the plan is not to have the lighting on within the cells, just to have natural lighting. Now in terms of when people do something wrong and they get sent to solitary confinement or if they've got a gang leader or somebody who's considered to be a dangerous prisoner or someone who just needs to be held in solitary confinement. They built a really grim solitary confinement wing. But before we go and have a look at that, the president's just looking at all of the IT systems that have been installed. There is a lot of CCTV, a lot of surveillance equipment, so that all of the guards who are there will be able to see if anything untoward is happening so that they can then stop that and also to make sure that there's no intimidation, no bribery, to make it very difficult for the prisoners to actually do anything. Now, in terms of the solitary confinement wing, this is where we're going now. And as you can see, this is a large concrete structure. So it's fairly grim. It's going to be relatively cold. And the idea here is to isolate prisoners. Now, there is no electricity in this cell. So it is pitch black when the door is closed. And we've got a concrete bunk and then a wash area. So basically another concrete basin that you'll either have to wash or go to the toilet in. And when that light is off, as you can see, it is virtually pitch black in that room. When the door is closed, you won't be able to see your hand in front of your face. So this is really hardcore solitary confinement. Nothing to do, no entertainment, no computer, no mobile phone, nothing. It's literally just sitting in a dark room for the whole time until somebody comes and unlocks the door. Now, in terms of interaction with the prisoners, there is a sliding section on the front of the metal door so that the prison guard can actually look in and see what's happening within the cell, albeit it's going to be pitch black in the cell. So it'll be really difficult to actually see anything and see if anything is actually going on in there. Now, in terms of interaction with the prisoner, there is a pull down flap so that meals can be fed through. And also when a prisoner needs to come out of this cell, they will put their hands through this flap so that they can be handcuffed before they are then taken away. And again, this is designed for security purposes to make sure that the prison guards are safe and to make it more difficult for the prisoners to do anything to attack the guards. Now, one of Naib Bukele's objectives is to try to break the gang culture and take back control of El Salvador. And what he's trying to do is establish that concept within the prison. So he's making sure that these prisoners 
don't have any opportunity to be able to continue their gang discussions, to be able to control anything from inside. So he's making sure that there are no mobile phones, no form of communication, and particularly the people who are in isolation will not have any communication whatsoever with any of the prisoners. And this is very different to what was happening previously in prisons in El Salvador, where they were covered in graffiti, the gangs were running the prison, everybody had access to cell phones and computers, and were actually also being paid up to $120 per month. So they actually had cash that they could then do whatever they liked with. So all of that is changing, and this mega prison has been designed to punish the people who've been put in there and to break this gang culture, to try to stop it permeating back onto the streets of El Salvador. Now, prisoners will be given the opportunity to work in the prisons, and they've built purpose-built work areas where prisoners will be taken to and then be given specific jobs and tools and specific tasks to try to repay some of their debts. So this is the only form of entertainment that prisoners will have within the prison, is to go to work and actually do something in terms of payback. Now, in terms of the guards in these prisons, the prisoners who are going to be located here are hardcore gang members. You saw from the beginning of the video that these guys have a lot of tattoos. They've been brought up in a gang culture. So there could be potential for a lot of violence and violent activity. So the guards have been given a lot of protective equipment. This is basically riot control. So all of the guards will have helmets. They will have guns. They will have protective equipment and they will be effectively going into a warfare situation. And all of the equipment in the mega prison is brand new. Everyone has been supplied with the latest state-of-the-art protective equipment. So you can see here that we've got a line of guards who are all in riot gear, so they're ready for action. This is how these guys will be dressed at all times in the prison. They will have helmets and guns and riot shields and anything that they need to protect themselves. And these guys will be fully trained and a lot of these operatives are likely to have army training previously. And you can see that they're all standing to attention here to salute the president. Now, in terms of the training that these people have been given, they have been set up to break up riots. That's essentially what these prison guards expect that they're going to be doing. So they've done a lot of training and drills as to how best to handle a riot. And here's a demonstration that they're giving for the president. So you can see that these guys are coming in with their guns loaded and ready to go. So this is really aggressive in terms of the approach that they're taking. They have got all of their riot gear on and then they're going to their predetermined areas within the prison. So each one of these teams will be deploying outside of a cell. So this assumes that a riot is going on within the cell. So they're going to have to break up that riot. And as we mentioned earlier in the video, there can be up to 100 people in each one of those cells. So if you can imagine 100 gang members who've decided that they want to start rioting, that's going to be fairly intimidating. That's going to be quite difficult to break up. They shouldn't have any weapons, but you never know. But if you look at what the riot police have got, they've got machine guns, they've got full riot gear on, they've got helmets, and there are a lot of them. So the idea is that these squads will line up outside of the cells and try to break up any riot that's going on within that cell itself. But as these cells will be locked for most of the time, the riot should be contained to individual cells, and therefore it won't be the whole prison that's rioting. And in addition to the prison guards that will be located on the ground, there will also be other prison guards who will be in elevated positions along the gangways along the top of the prison. They've also got guns, so they will be able to take action if needed. Now, one of the complaints about the prison service historically has been that the guards haven't really had any facilities whatsoever. So in this new mega prison, we've got dormitories where all of the guards will be sleeping. We've got individual washing facilities, so they've got private shower cubicles. We've got private lockers, so everybody can store all of their equipment and all of their personal items in there. But you can see that all of the prison guards will be sleeping in a mass area. So it's very similar to what you see in the army. And that's not very surprising because effectively what we've got is the army will be manning this prison. But in terms of the welfare of the prison guards, there are some entertainment facilities. So we've got some table tennis tables that have been put in. So you can have some downside and actually play some games. And the prison guards will have access to a full gym. So all of these machines are brand new. They'll be able to come in here and exercise. These machines are not available to the prisoners. So there will be no gym. There will be no exercise equipment for the prisoners themselves. They will all be kept in their cells. All of these new facilities are for the prison guards only, not for the prisoners. 
And the idea behind all of this is that the prison guards will be able to maintain a healthy lifestyle and therefore be happier in their work. Now, of course, one of the other features about a prison is that you need to make it secure. You need to make it difficult for people to either break out or to break in. You don't want the gangs being able to get into the prison and extract people or for people to get out. So the prison has been set up with 19 towers. So these are raised areas where it will be very easy to see what's going on, to see if there's any prisoners in unauthorized areas. And they will be manned at all times. And in addition to that, the prison also has electrified chain fences with 15,000 volts of electricity going through that chain fence at all times. So even if a prisoner does manage to escape from the central area and get out to one of these fences, if they try to climb that fence, they will be electrocuted by 15,000 volts. The walking areas all around the outside of the prison have all been laid with gravel to make sure that there's lots of noise so that if prisoners are trying to escape, if they do manage to get into these areas, people will be able to hear them and it will set off the sound detection system. Now, in addition to the electrified fences, the concrete walls all around the facility are reinforced. So therefore, they should be able to withstand any sort of bomb damage or bomb attack. And they're also 11 meters high. So that's around 35 feet high. So these things are going to be very difficult to scale. And then even if you did manage to scale the sheer concrete wall, it's got an electrified fence on top of that as well. So there are a lot of design features that have been built in to make it very difficult for any of these prisoners to be able to get out. So this mega prison has been designed to make it very difficult to escape from. Firstly, the prisoners are held within the cell, within the module. Secondly, the building itself that the cells are within are locked down and secure. And then once you get out of those areas, you've then got to scale the electrified fences. If you get past the electrified fences, you then have to go over the graveled area and you meet these concrete walls, which also have electrified fences on top of them. And as well as the 19 towers that have been built all around the complex, there is also extensive CCTV and surveillance equipment. So the idea is that the guards will notice if somebody is trying to break out of this prison and therefore be able to do something about it. Now, in addition to the actual security of the building itself, outside of the prison, it's designed that there are going to be army patrols patrolling the whole of the area. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this mega prison has been set up in a remote location in the middle of nowhere. So even in the unlikely event the prisoners do get out, the army can then target all of those escapees. And the plan is to have around 600 soldiers and around 250 members of the National Civil Police on rotation protecting the area all around this prison. And all of these individuals will be armed. So the patrols will be constantly monitoring what's going on outside the prison, firstly to stop people from trying to escape out of the prison, but also to make sure that nothing's happening with regards to the gangs organizing some sort of breakout, trying to do something either where they're scaling the walls or damaging the walls or digging under the walls or something of that nature. So the patrols will be constantly running around trying to stop all of that activity. So hopefully you've enjoyed this slightly different video today. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up and thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end.